and we are ready to stitch. We got through uh, step seven previously and learned how to deal with the floss and thread a needle. And of course, this is the finished project, but we're gonna move on and learn uh, the blanket stitch. Wool applique employs a number of decorative embroidery stitches, uh, not only to secure stuff down, but also to embellish, which means to add something to make it look uh, better. We're at step seven, learning the first embroidery stitch. And again, the blanket stitch is used quite commonly with uh, wool applique. Uh, it's a little I don't want to say formal, but it just is what it is. If you want really primitive work, then oftentimes a person that does wool applique in a primitive style will use a whip stitch. I don't use it very often because I figure every time the needle goes through the wool, if I did the effort to do it by hand, I want to see it. And the whip stitch is a little bit more... Um, concealing type of stitch. So we're going to blanket stitch. We're going to end up blanket stitching the fun, the perimeter of the flip-flops, and then when we get to the very end, the perimeter of the pouch itself. So you'll use it three separate color times on this particular project. So here we go, blanket stitch. With your kit, you will have received some form of a sheet that shows you the most popular embroidery stitches. Here we are right here with the blanket stitch. And so that's the one that we're going to use. I'm gonna ask you to um, not be frustrated. Don't go for perfection if this is the first time you've ever done any um, embroidery stitching or wool applique. There's a learning curve. It's not a bad thing. If you do more than one project, you will see a uh, succession or period of growth over your work. Well, it, where as long as you're continuing to do it, it will get better and better if better is what you're after. So you see um, the one that we prepared way back in steps two through five. And then our step six was threading the needle, uh, peeling the floss and threading the needle, threading the chenille needle, remember elongated eye, sharp point. I talked about this little thread end. I am gonna go ahead and trim that down to about a quarter of an inch. Don't go smaller than an eighth of an inch. Um, just because, again, we never want the opportunity for that not to work itself out when we're pulling on it or whatever. I look over the motif, and um, first of all, in, in teaching, I've got to figure out which stitch to start with, so I'm starting with a blanket stitch. But when you get more and more advanced through this, oftentimes what I will stitch first is the tiniest part, which happens to be the flip-flop um, straps. Uh, we will probably do those next, but we're going to start up here with a blanket stitch. Then I look at this fun motif and I say to myself, where do I want to start? Finally, I have just kind of uh, learned to tell myself, start. Imagine this is a clock, a circular clock. It's noon up here. It's six down here. I oftentimes start at about seven or eight o'clock. So I'm going to start right in here right here where the um, base of the F narrows, I'm gonna start right there. Now, that's not where I'm gonna put my needle in, it's where my needle is gonna come out. So what do I do? I have two choices. I'm gonna go ahead and unfurl this. I can come straight up from the back and leave my knot back here but I don't want to do that. I don't want any exposed knots. If I can help it on the back, you may end up with a few, but it's okay if I see exposed stitches, but I don't really want any exposed knots, starting knots especially. So what I'm going to suggest that you do is um, bury your knot. If you are a quilter and have done any hand quilting, you know what I mean. If not, here we go. So I want my needle to come out at about what I'm guessing is a six or a seven or eight o'clock position on this F, but I'm actually going to start opposite that. So that would be, what would you think? About two o'clock. I'm going to go in right here. I'm going to just gently coax up under that 
coral motif, the F. I don't necessarily want to pick up any stitches from our sand blanket uh, stitch yet. So I'm starting at about a two o'clock position on the opposite side of where I want my needle to come up. I have, I'm gonna do it again. I have just kind of gently coaxed up under that motif. I'm, I'm almost like I'm tunneling. I'm kind of passing, uh, rubbing back and forth so I can get up under there. And then I'm gonna go through, then I can feel it going through the wool. And I'm gonna come up at about my seven o'clock position. I'm gonna eyeball the back because I, want to bury threads this is pretty thick anytime i can make the threads not show on this side is a good thing but notice i've done this for a lot of years and i am okay with what shows it's stable we've pressed it in at the very end and it should last you a lifetime without coming undone so once i have started opposite from where i want to come out i'm going to just lift that up I'm going to push my needle through and I'm going to pull. Now your instinct usually is that the knot wants to stop there, but I'm going to yank just tight enough, tight, 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 until I hope, whoop, now see I pulled too tight and I pulled it right through. So let's do it again. And that's to be expected actually. That is not a problem. I'll do it again. I want it just enough so I can get that under there where you can't see it but my knot is secure and technically it doesn't show on that side. So I came, I came in at this position, went up under there, came out at that position at about seven o'clock if you were looking at a clock. Okay, we are ready to go. Uh, blanket stitch. Your blanket stitch, if worked correctly and um, Again, if you've got if you've mastered a blanket stitch and you're doing it opposite of me, this is probably not the time to undo that. But if you are not, let me show you the correct way to do it. If you're right-handed, you are literally actually going to work your stitches counterclockwise to the motif. If you're left-handed, you would work your stitches clockwise around the motif. Why is that? Well, it's so that I can most uh, accurately or efficiently use this left-hand thumb as I stitch, believe it or not. So for the blanket stitch, you're almost always going to draw an imaginary circle. Do you see my circle here? And I'm going to, I know I came out here at about seven o'clock, I'm gonna move over about an eighth of an inch or so and into the, the wool, the coral wool, wool about an eighth of an inch, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna make sure I'm picking up some of the blanket and some of, and definitely the coral. And my needle's gonna come out right at the edge of my motif. So I'm gonna do that, I'm going to my needle is coming up inside that circle. You see, I've still got a circle and my needle is in the center of it. And that's important because it needs to catch this, what I call, this is my leading thread. It needs to catch your thread each time. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna move down about an eighth of an inch. Now, when you come to a corner or a point, or in the case of this, a rounded corner, I'm gonna work that particular stitch. This one went kind of straight in. I'm gonna work that one as a diagonal. So I'm gonna come in about a sixteenth, or about an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna come out at my blanket where the blanket and the coral meet at the edge. I still have my circle. I'm using my thumb to hold this thread right here, my left thumb, and I'm gonna pull. And my circle comes up, my thread's in the circle. Don't pull it so tight. If you pull it too tight, your thread will overlap to the front. So I don't wanna do that. I'm just gonna coax that loose again. And I'm just gonna pull it tight enough that it lays against the perimeter but not so tight that it flops over. Then I'm gonna be back on the straight again. So I'm gonna actually come in right about next to my diagonal one. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of blanket and I'm going to end up coming out right there. So I went in at the coral, out at the sand blanket, and I'm just gonna twist my needle a bit, push on the back so it's coming up to the sky and I'm gonna follow that and pull it just tight enough 
to lay this thread here on the perimeter. 